It's so funny is people walk over it all the time and have no idea what they're seeing, you know? Yeah. And right here where you're standing. If you were able to reconstruct what was here, you would have seen this as the roof pendant. The arc would have been sediments all across the top of the magma chamber, but the top of the magma chamber has been sawed off. But there are a couple of places where you still have elements of the old roof. Up here from Tioga Pass, north for a little way, down a convict lake. Uh, down uh, just um, west of Bishop, uh, there's still segments of the old roof, but in most places it's uh, it's gone. And uh, and this is the contact between the two, this zone. So over there, it's almost pure granite. And if you look across the lake over there, it's almost pure older sediments. This there stuff on the right is about 170. 150, 170 million years old. The granite here is about uh, 90 million years old. And this is the contact between the two, this zone. So over there, it's almost pure granite. And if you look across the lake over there, it's almost pure older sediments. Which existed here 200 million years ago, was eroded away to damn near nothing. And then about 40 million years ago, you started the process of building the modern Sierra along the access of the older one. And some of these sediments are the leftovers from the older Sierra. The range that was here, where you see it most spectacularly, is down at Convict Lake. Have you ever been in Convict Lake? And you look across Convict Lake, at that wall of, of, of sediments over there. That's the core of the ancient Sierra. And most places, that has been eroded off. The process that we call de-roofing. That these magma chambers had an older sedimentary roof on it. But it's, it's an amazing thing to sit there and contemplate that, that there was one whole mountain range here that was pretty much wiped out and the second one that's sprung up and taken its place. Glacier comes off here, comes down there. This is all glaciated. This is glaciated through here. That's glaciated. That ridge over there, if you get on that, the glacier marks are very, very strong. And that glacier continued on down into uh, Lundy Canyon. Hmm. The reason this lake is here, it sort of goes opposite the, the, the axis of the glacier flow, is that this zone of contact is much weaker. That's why there's a gully there. And uh, so it sort of eroded out where the rest of this stuff is more solid on either side, right in the zone. It's much more fractured and beaten up and erodes more easily. Not really. hmm. so Interesting. It's the combination of the two where the older sediments were there and as the granite came up was sort of intruded between the layers. Well if you're trying to figure out the history of the whole region of what happened when, you know, when did this flow in, where did it come from, what was the sequence in which, uh, uh, though this is a uh, uh, one batholith from here clear down to uh, Tanaya Lake, it didn't happen in one spurt in a year and a half. It happened over three or four million years in 20 or 30, 40 spurts. And there are guys who would want to figure out the history of how these things form over time. And one bit of it would be build the flow maps. What's so funny is people walk over it all the time and have no idea what they're seeing, you know? Yeah. 